Hey, hello, how do you do? Shady d Rex here, and welcome to another episode of Episode Rundown, where I, Shady d Rex, run down the episodes of Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir. And today we're looking at Season 2, Episode 3, Despair Bear. Um, a couple people told me they were, they were anxious for me to watch this episode, and I now see why. This is a very Chloe-focused episode. Um, but as you can see from the opinion bar, you might have a bit of a surprise on how I feel about this episode. Uh, but let's start at the beginning. The episode starts with Chloe, uh, well, not Chloe, with everybody in the class, uh, watching Marinette's dad bake. And this is the, the snowball that starts in Avalanche. Avalanche, I'm about to say a very big nitpick. Why is Marinette's dad there? Like, I know he's there to bake them things, but he's just basically showing them baking things, but why is he there? Like, in past episodes when he's been at the school, I think he was only there in one episode, they had a reason. It was career day, and everybody's parents were there. Uh, he's just randomly here, baking, and um, Alia makes this comment, like, I love when your dad comes and bakes for us, Marinette. Um, like, he does this a lot, but and it's, it's possible that they could have a reason, but they never tell us any reason why he's there. And it's, it's little details like that that Miraculous doesn't pay attention to that build up. Um, cause when you, when you put little details in like that, um, you, and you, you focus on them, you get a great show like Avatar the Last Airbender, where the more you pay attention, the more you get out of it. But with this one, just the first time viewing, I'm always catching some little detail that doesn't make any sense. Um, but again, that's just a nitpick that, uh, but going in, um, uh, he's baking for the class and he's showing them how to do it and Chloe doesn't want to do it. And she goes to the window and she calls the fire department so that they can not have class. Now this, this was really upsetting. Uh, one, Chloe is now breaking the law. She, she Chloe has always been this this character that's supposed to be, that you're supposed to hate. You're just supposed to hate Chloe. And I'm fine with that, but just like you can try to force love onto a character, they are forcing hate onto Chloe. The fact that she's willing to now break a law to just be this snobbish brat. And what's worse is they don't really give her any reason to do this. She was, she didn't want to bake. That's fine. She didn't want to bake. But nobody was asking her to. She didn't have to bake. The uh, Marinette's dad was baking. And uh, I can see if maybe she was jealous because the attention wasn't her on her or something like that. But the episode didn't really showcase that. She was just being mean for the sake of being mean. And that's really poor choice for a character. Um, they just want us to hate this character just because. And I, I'm kind of saying that iffily because this is an episode dedicated to making us like her a little bit more. But whenever they, whenever Chloe does something bad, they tend to not really give her good reason behind it. Or I, I shouldn't say whenever, but this, this time it was really bad. Um, this just goes into more issues I have with Chloe. Yes, Chloe is my favorite character, but as I've said all the time, she is the worst character in the show. They just have her there to make bad things happen. And it's it's not authentic at all. It is not authentic. So she calls the fire department, which interrupts the class. Um, nobody, nobody really catches her doing it. Marinette sees her on the phone, but she doesn't hear what she says. Marinette has to leave the classroom for something. Her dad asked her to do something. And she goes to... She, as she's going downstairs, the alarm goes off, which is weird that the <laughs> fire alarm would go off, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ignore that and say, I don't know, the fire department called the school back and somebody pulled the alarm, because the alarm doesn't go off just because you call the fire department. But, uh, the principal announces, hey, somebody called the, the fire department, uh, said there was a fire, this is a serious offense. Um, this is a small behind school. Like, what kind of school is it that it only has, like, some 20 to, to 50 students. This is a really small school. And the principal's addressing, and, you know, they're doing this little comedy skit where the fire department guy has to go and the principal's not letting him. And the, and Chloe said, Chloe tries to blame it on Marinette. She says she saw Marinette leave the class just before the fire department came. Maybe it was her. I like that both Adrian and Alia stood up for Marinette. Um, 
And somebody, somebody told me, they said that Adrian, uh, one of his big problems is that he doesn't really have, uh, friends who understand him. And I wholeheartedly disagree with that because in the origin episode, it showed that he was satisfied with the friends that he had. And in the very first episode of season one, Nino went out of his way to try and, um, deal with his dad. But anyway, that's a bit of a tangent for later times. Uh, but I did like that Alia and, uh, what's his name, Adrian, stood up for Marinette and said, hey, we know she didn't do it because such and such, such and such. Uh, Adrian said, it doesn't make sense. Her dad was on stage and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so Marinette says she, she she's speaking low. She's like, I saw Chloe on her phone. I think maybe she did it. And I'm like, that's enough to come to the principal and says, I think Chloe may have had something to do with this. You don't have to, you do not have to say, Chloe did it. You would approach the principal and say, I did see Chloe on her phone when it happened, so it is possible that she did it. But Adrian and Alia tell her not to do it because she's not Chloe and she doesn't have enough proof. Um, no, you don't go making accusations, but if you have a suspicion, you tell the authority figure your suspicion. Um, and they can handle it. And then if in their investigation or whatever, they find out that there's not enough evidence, then that's how they handle it. But no, uh, as she, she shouldn't have like yelled out. It was definitely Chloe because I saw her on her phone. She should have came to the principal afterwards and said, Hey, I saw Chloe on her phone when it happened. So I really didn't like that. Chloe, uh, the, the principal then says, uh, I'm going on a real long tangent just on this first part, but I, I might just have to spend a good chunk of time on this episode because this is supposed to be a Chloe episode. It's supposed to be really good. And there are a lot of things that kind of frustrated me. The principal uh, then says, well, if nobody wants to confess, I'm going to punish everybody. Now, you can do that in a class and get away with that. If you did that in a school, there would be some serious protests, especially with one of the parents at the school. You're going to punish my kid for something they didn't do. You can't just punish everybody because one person did something. Like I said, if it was a classroom, you could get away with something like that. Uh, but an entire school, no. Uh, I, this principal guy annoys me a lot. Um, not just in this episode, but in, in past episodes. He's not as annoying as the mayor. The mayor is just despicable. But this principal guy annoys me. So then Chloe says, um, excuse me, my dad's not gonna like if you punish me without any proof. And he says, he blatantly says, everybody is punished but Chloe. He's not, he doesn't even try to hide his favoritism towards Chloe anymore. He, 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 it's, it's unrealistically annoying. That's, that's what's getting me. Um, I wouldn't mind if he had a bias to Chloe, but a principal in this position would try to hide it more. He just outright shows his biasness. It's again, the episode being so blatant about you guys need to hate Chloe. You need to hate her. See how hateable we made her? You should hate her. And it's not realistic. Uh, or, it's not believable. That's what I should say. So everyone gets punished but Chloe. And I would think Chloe would want, want to make it so that Sabrina and Adrian don't get punished. But she doesn't. She just makes it so she doesn't. Adrian comes knowing uh, what Chloe did because he heard Marinette. And he says, uh, he, he asked Chloe if she did it. And she said, of course she did it. Um, and he said, don't you feel ashamed? Everybody's working because of something you did. And Chloe says... Yeah, but they like doing things like cooking anyway, so it's not like it makes any difference. Now, that that got me happy and upset at the same time, uh, because in, from Chloe's perspective, physical work is physical work. Um, if you like doing one, you, you like doing another. That makes sense to her as a character, as somebody who doesn't do physical labor. You know, she doesn't, She we've seen in the past, she doesn't like to, to work on her projects. She doesn't like to... to clean she doesn't like to uh cook she doesn't know anything about all that stuff uh that makes sense to her character and i kind of like that but at the same time they kind of make it seem like she did that just so she could force everyone to clean N that makes no sense <laughs> why would she do that and, and you might say well she was trying to be nice this whole episode is about how she doesn't know how to be nice she doesn't know how to think about others um, so no, I'm not going to say she did that to be nice. I'm going to say that she did that just to be mean for mean sake. And that's the point. She has no motivation. Chloe has no motivation behind her meanness. And it upsets me because uh, I, I like the character of a mean girl, especially one who's very pretentious and um, very um, sure of herself. But without 
any really motivation behind her. It's literally just, she's literally just doing it so the plot goes on. That It makes her a plot device, essentially. So, Adrian tells Chloe, if you're going to act like this, Chloe, I can't be your friend anymore. I know we've been friends since we were little, um, but I can't, I can't be friends with you if you're going to do that. Finally, freaking Adrian. Adrian should have done this a long time ago because there have been so many scenes where he's just looked at, watched Chloe do something horrible and just accepted it. I'm finally glad, I'm glad they finally addressed it. Um, so Chloe has a, a breakdown because, um, you know, Adrian is like her life. <laughs> and she, uh, she talks to her butler, not Sabrina. I found this weird. She talks to her butler about this. Um, and the butler, who actually does genuinely care about Chloe, um, brings out this teddy bear and says, you know, he, he was always nice to you. When you're in a situation, you should just think, what would, what was his name? Mr. Cudley. What would Mr. Cudley do? And Chloe says, okay, I'll be nice so I can try to win Adrian back. She invites all her classmates to a party. Meredith says she doesn't want to go because it's Chloe in character. I was going to say it's it would be very out of character if Marinette went to this party. There would be no reason for her to go to this party. And then Adrian says he's going to go. So Marinette immediately jumps on. That's that's good character on Marinette's part. Uh, Chloe is constantly in this battle with her butler. She wants to act mean. Her butler shows her teddy bear. She's trying to, and then she tells him to hurry up and put it away. Okay, she'll be nice. The best part of this episode, in my opinion, was when uh, Maylene, I think that's her name, Maylene, Maylene, something like that, says, does, she asks Chloe if she has any ice. And Chloe, in the heat of things, says, <laughs> Tells her she doesn't know she's not her servant, and if she's so cold, she should take off the hideous looking jacket. Oh man, I love when Chloe delivers like a really good singer. Like, <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, that's what's happening throughout this part. There are a couple of funny scenes where you know, because the, the stereotypical French greeting is kissing, um, they Chloe has to kiss people on the cheek, and then she has to do it to Marinette. <laughs> And Marinette doesn't want to do it either, but because Adrian is watching, she doesn't want to look bad. That was that actually made me laugh. Um, so Chloe, uh, Chloe is doing her best to try and be nice. Agent Kim comes and asks her to slow dance. Again, good character. I like that. I like that Kim still hasn't given up. Um, you know, it, it, it speaks a lot about his character when he was making fun of uh, Ivan. Because Ivan wouldn't ask out Maylene, but he, he, he's asked out Chloe, and he, even though she's rejected him, he's still going after her. Um, I know some people think that is creepy. Take no for an answer, dude. Uh, but he's still being respectable about it. You know, he's still asking her to dance. He's still asking her permission for stuff. Uh, and he, she, she says yes to be nice. Marinette gets pushed by Alia, who once again, Alia gets the award for best wingman ever. Um, Adrian, being the clueless Adrian that he is, asks Marinette if she wants to dance because she bumped into him. Um, so they start dancing. Uh, Alia, again, best wingman, comes and like playfully makes it so that they're romantically dancing. This has Chloe in a fit. <laughs> And Chloe says, screw all this being nice. And she goes up to confront Marinette. The butler comes out with the bear and she basically fires the butler right then and there because he's both embarrassed her. Immediately, Sabrina comes back into the picture. I don't know if that's symbolic that Sabrina comes back into the picture when Chloe's mean and only then in this episode. Um, but once the butler is out, Sabrina is like immediately standing next to Chloe and they're plotting something. So because, oh, I forgot to mention, during this time, Hawk Moth is looking for victims. So this episode demonstrates um, he doesn't need to have a victim in mind before he akumatizes them. I thought when he akumatizes them, he put the power in the akuma and then it turned them into that specific thing. No, he just puts generic power into the akuma and then he can choose the power once they uh, once it makes contact. So he knows that... He knows that Chloe is going to upset someone. Remember in my review how I said Chloe is responsible for half the problems, half the Akumas in the show? They are now self-aware of that. Hawk Moth is upset because Chloe is nice because he knows that she can usually 
tick someone off and he can make, use that to make an Akuma. Uh, they actually say that out loud. And I'm not sure how I feel about that because I, I like when things are self-aware, but at the same time, uh, to quote Mr. Enter, pointing out your problems does not make them go away. <laughs> I don't even know if they see it as a problem. So the, the butler becomes uh, Despair Bear and basically he's controlling, he's tiny inside this bear controlling it and the bear can grab onto somebody and then control them. Um, it's not the most um, creative of villains, but this episode was meant to focus on Chloe. They just threw the villain in for uh, repetitive sake. So uh, Ladybug and Cat Noir show up uh, as the bear. The bear is constantly trying to attack Chloe. Ladybug and Cat Noir show up and Chloe instinctively helps Ladybug. And she says, hey, I was nice. And I'm like, uh, is it really nice or is it... Uh, instinct, you know, does it really count? Um, I mean, you can do something nice out of instinct, but I wasn't sure if that really counted. Marinette goes to fight this. Uh, oh, of course, this is a, a villain who can take control of people. So, uh, as when I saw that, I said, I was look, watching the episode like this, and like, I wonder if Cat Noir is gonna get taken over. And then immediately after, Cat Noir got taken over. It's the Please stop that. Please stop that. If you want, I don't care if the episode makes Marinette this super duper awesome hero that's better than everyone else, but stop making Cat Noir look like such a chump. It downgrades him and it downgrades Ladybug's um, importance because you have to, it feels like you have to downgrade Cat Noir to upgrade Mar uh, Ladybug. So they go on the roof to fight and Chloe, who's feeling confident about her niceness because she helped, goes up to help them. Um, and Ladybug, uh, this is really weird to me. Um, she accepts Chloe's help, and together they defeat the Despair Bear. Um, that felt really weird because of how much Marinette just hates Chloe. But it's something I'm willing to debate about because, A, we've already had the problem of Ladybug not accepting help from Chloe. And so if they did it again, that would just be a repeat. And B... Uh, she, Chloe did help Ladybug earlier, so maybe she was feeling in a generous mood. Um, but yeah, uh, they defeat the Spare Bear and Chloe it feels good about herself because she helped and she considered that being nice. Again, I'm iffy about how that is considered being nice. Um, that's more of a dopamine rush. You feel accomplished. You feel like you've done something. So they go back downstairs to the party with, uh... Ladybug and Cat Noir turning back into Adrian and Marinette. And Chloe goes to Adrian and says, See, I can be nice, Adrian, so can we be friends now? All the complaints I've made before are just whatever. I, I, you know, I feel the way I do. But this, to me, is the major complaint I have with this episode. Adrian says to Chloe, Yeah, Chloe, you can do it if you put your mind to it. We'll be best friends forever. One thing friend zone, but that's just... <laughs> that's just, that just made me giggle that Chloe put herself in the friend zone. Uh, but that's, that's not what I have an issue with. The major issue I have with this episode is that Chloe was clearly being nice just so Adrian would like her. That was the only reason she was being nice. The only time she wasn't doing that was when she was helping Ladybug. Um, but all, uh, Adrian, I thought the episode was going to address it. I thought Adrian was going to say, Chloe, I'm so glad to see you being nice. But you can't just be nice just to be friends with me. You have to, it, it has to be something you want to do. And they could have incorporated that with the ladybug. Adrian could have said, like, the way you helped ladybug, you wanted to do that. You have to incorporate it into yourself that you want to be nice to people. But Adrian does not say that. Instead, once he makes the, the pinky promise that he'll be best friends with Chloe forever, um, Chloe goes right back to being mean, and Adrian says, <laughs> she'll never change. No, Adrian! No! You were so dismissive of this horrible behavior that Chloe had. And now that she's gotten your approval, she's gone right back to being mean. This, this is going to... Con it's probably not going to continue to be a problem because um, the writers are going to do what they want. But... In a believable situation, this would continue to be a problem because you have now given her permission to do whatever she wants. You will always be her friend. You were the only thing keeping her nice. You should have put in her head, you need to be nice 
for your own sake, not for mine. This is the opposite of what Fluttershy did to Discord. Um, Discord, uh, Discord was always on uh, what he considered a cage because if he wanted friendship, he had to be nice. Chloe is getting friendship and she's not being nice. That, to me, just destroyed everything the episode attempted. That's why I, I hate this thing more than the other stuff. Because the other stuff, while I do believe um, had their issues, they were trying to build something with this episode. I think that one moment destroyed all the effort of the episode. Chloe just gets to go back to being mean. And so, yeah. Uh, I really hope I got everything because I did have a lot to say about this episode. I, I, I still love Chloe, but I've always loved Chloe for artificial reasons. I don't love her character because of her character. I love her character because it reminds me of traits I like about characters. I like that she's confident, but that confidence is completely misguided. I like that she's... um. I like that she's uh, stuck up and she only wants to fight her things in life. But that comes with her not being appreciative of the lower things in life, you know. Chloe is still going to be my favorite character. It's just, it's, it's instinctive of me to like a character like her. But she isn't deserving of it, is what I should say. She hasn't earned the status of Mean Girl. It, it's really weird. It's, it's like the opposite of Starlight Glimmer. She hasn't earned my hatred for her. She hasn't earned my respect for her as a mean girl. It's just being thrown onto her and I, I don't like it. And I know this episode was supposed to be a setup of uh, starting her redemption, you know, because eventually she's going to be the, the bee miraculous, but they didn't do it well. They really did not do it well. And it's, it's incredibly disappointing because I was waiting for some development from Chloe and some confrontation from, for, from Adrian. And the fact that they did it so poorly is just like, Oh, man. So that's that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know I did a lot of ranting. I'm on a lot of tangents, but that happens from time to time, especially as I go deeper into the into the show. Um, but that's all I got to say as far as I know. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Let me know your opinions about the episode and your opinions about this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. This has been Shady Durex. So long. Farewell. I'd be to say goodbye.